This is the Napier Railton, and I bet you're looking at it going, wow, that's a pretty cool looking race car. No, no it isn't. That is a 24 liter land speed record vehicle. Oh my God. I can't stress, this is not a race car. You know when this thing first was made? It had no brakes. <laughs> anyway, eventually after a couple of years and they ended up using it for World War testing for parachutes apparently, then they fitted at least rear brakes to it. So that's the version we'll be going with approximately. Oh wait, hold on. Did I not mention? Yeah. I made a 3D model of this. So this is going to be completely usable in automation, except I wanted the grill to be a lot more accurate. I mean, this grill is very, very specific. So for myself, I've kind of made my own version that has very specifically that sort of grill. Yeah, that's right. I'm keeping one for myself. Here's where it gets a little bit weird though. Sure, it has a 12 cylinder engine, but it's a W12. And not one of those weird Volkswagen W12s. Oh no, nothing quite so mundane. This is three banks of four cylinders. And if you're thinking, oh, so it's just some four cylinders put together. Yeah, but they're eight liters each bank. The biggest sort of four cylinder you'll normally find is about two liters. Sometimes on some specific sort of vehicles, it'll go 2.3 to 2.5, but oh my God. Oh yeah. I just listen to this thing. <laughs> that started up fantastic. And then the rev. That's as far as I'm revving it. Uh, that's because this thing isn't actually meant to rev really high and it peaks at power at 2600 RPM going over 600 horsepower. Now, for those of you that know that horsepower usually comes much later, but to get horsepower so low, you're going to have to have a lot of torque. A lot. I'm talking a ginormous number of torque. That out of a petrol engine is insane. This is how much torque the Bugatti Veyron makes. This sort of gun dwarfs that, oh my God. So here's my pretties. This thing is already fantastic to look at. We are, however, going to hide the chassis. And then we're gonna go with the heaviest material of the year. This thing is going to be a ladder. If you have a look here, this thing weighs 5,000 pounds or in real numbers, 2200 kilos. We're going to need all the weight we can get. But luckily, it is 3.3 meters long. Anywho, this is gonna be just made out of a bunch of steel and also I should probably set the year to be really old. As for suspension, well, I mean, it's pretty obvious if you have a look at some of the pictures, it seems to have leaf springs and if it has it in the front, it probably has it in the rear. <laughs> in the rear. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's just put the leaf springs all around. As for the engine, we are going to go with a 60 degree V12, just because it's the closest and when we get over to converting it later, it makes my life a little bit easier. As for the engine, it is going to be an overhead cam four valve cylinder. I know, we had run such an old engine, but this is from Wikipedia itself, and to me, that looks like four valves per cylinder. But yet it took America until just recently to get rid of their final push rod engine. Oh my god. Oh wait, we can only go up to 16.2 liters. Pathetic. I could go with a V16 to get that extra cylinder capacity in there. Eh, uh, maybe. I did give this thing quite a large engine bay. Some say overkill, I say... Screw you. And even though it doesn't really matter, I am gonna give it the 6.1 compression ratio that it actually came with. And then a really small camshaft. And then no muffling whatsoever because this thing was loud. Apparently it even shook the ground when it was around. Apparently though, all of the internals are just full of bits. That's fine, let's increase the quality. Apparently it only wants to go up to 4200 RPM. Since we're only really going to there anyway, that'll be fine. And hey, our numbers are actually pretty darn close. How is this possible? Oh, it's also running like leaded. It's probably gonna run an unleaded, probably low quality 85. I wonder what it sounds like. Ooh, that's a good engine. Oh God, I just want to sit here all day doing this. It sounds so good. Oh, that's a good sound. 
<clears throat> anyway, let's move on. Now, as for the paint job, I believe this is all steel and then this is a green chassis rail. Here we go. Here's a good angle. We've even got like leather green straps. Okay. But that looks very, very flat material, not very shiny and also very rough by the looks of it. Then again, I suppose this is nearly a hundred years old. First steel, we're gonna go with an aluminium because I think that gives a nicer finish than steel. And it is fairly reflective. So let's see what we can do about that. Dirtiness, okay, well, apparently that's can't really change its roughness. I don't want to go steel because steel just ends up looking really dirty and chrome is very shiny. But at least we can turn the dirtiness up a little bit. Oh, that looks terrible. Hmm. Unfortunately, we can't change the scale of the dirtiness. So it's got like this fixed pattern on it, which is pretty garbage. Well, I've exhausted all other options. It looks like steel is my only option. God damn it. Hopefully this doesn't look garbage when it gets over to BMNG because the exportation has never really been great with steel. Then for the chassis rails, we're going to give it a lovely military green. The rest of this is all looking pretty fine so far. We got black wire spoke wheels with a two prong. Luckily in here, we've got this great wheel pack and we got a very loose fitting thing so it's a lot like that that's pretty darn close now to change the prongs in here we're gonna give it a lovely plastic black paint we'll look at the rest later but we're gonna go for now rear wheel drive a manual and a three speed this is apparently also a very rough as guts gearbox top speed as well it's probably gonna be pretty darn high apparently one of the speed records was at least 230 so we'll go with that. Apparently this thing has done a lot of world speed records. I mean, even if we have a look here, it apparently broke 47 world speed records. Holy cow. This thing was really pushing the edges, upgrading every time, doing a better job every time. But it does look like 230 was our limit. All right, well, that seems also to be around the top end of our RPM range anyway. Apparently the drive ratio is 1.66. What do we got here? Apparently 3.1. Oh, that's as much as we can go. Okay, well, we're gonna have to fudge that one over <laughs> in BMNG. That is an intense drive ratio. As for the tires of this day, it's probably something like a half long life and probably not that thickness these look very skinny apparently the tire size ranged by a 19 by 7 to a 35 by 6 <sighs> i'm not fully sure if i understand what these wheel sizes are meant to represent but okay hmm he thinks this is not quite right because like a 400 millimeter tire is tiny I mean, I'm already at 19 millimeter inch wheels. Can give it 180s, can we? Okay, well, we can go up to 175s. These are quite wide. This is not right. If we measure here on this image, it reckons it's got an 890 millimeter height. And on the rear, it reckons 910. You know what it is? The body is very high. Ah, the wheel itself seems to be around 620 millimeters, which is around 24 inches. Good. That's going to give us that lovely, lovely skinny wall sort of look thing we have. And then it looks like about a 120 millimeter width. So let's go with that. It's giving us exactly the look we want. Perfect. I don't know where these other numbers came from or what they actually mean because tires are measured in different ways and being so old, it's going to be even weirder. And we'll just run with this. Brake sizes on the front, basically nothing. On the rear, I mean... This thing was apparently used to just rolling to a stop after doing its speed runs. We're going to go with the upgraded version where it has rear brakes. So where are... Okay, good. I can see the brakes big enough. Also, the brakes are on the wrong side of this wheel. What? Why is the, why is the brake here? What the hell? A single seat. Basic. No infotainment. A manual... Ooh. Uh, reticulating ball? And... Clearly no safety. Why would you want that? Apparently our tires blew out. They want us to increase the rim size? <laughs> no! So instead we're just gonna increase the tire width and hopefully they don't blow out no more. Nope, apparently it's still an issue. Apparently it just wants to be really thick and jungusy tires. Those are too wide. And then the brakes suffer from vague fade. I think that is fantastic. So we're going to ignore that one. Luckily, however, we can fudge these numbers over another part. We can just go into wheels and then narrow them down a bit. Wait, is that narrowing just the wheel and not the tire? Oh, no, no, it's doing both. It's just looking at the wrong one. Now we're doing the right one. 
I think that's about right. Now, if we have a look at historical photos, they look very much like slicks, though they wouldn't have used slicks. That's probably more likely to be just a ground down medium compound. See a similar thing here? Very much doubt that these are slicks. There it's looking absolutely glorious. That is just a fantastic photo. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Either way, I think we're gonna go in and we're gonna give this thing a custom tire tread which can be found in a preset that I made that'll do next thing we're gonna change the body Z offset right there I think is where this normally looks to sit oh that engine is very oh that is very high up oh goodness let's go ahead and drop this engine down yeah and then maybe move it back a little bit I mean it's a W 12, but not a VW W12. This one's four banks of three cylinders. So it doesn't need to be too far back. It really does kind of sit in there in the middle. Let's start getting to the next part, which will be the grill, I think I'll start with. So there's two different versions. There's one with this sort of stuff, which I'm not a big fan of. One with less of that. Then basically this one, where it's just a big mesh grill on there. So I think I'm gonna grab something like this. Scale it on the right axis to about 0 0.01. And then use this, oops, it easies, hold on. There we go, unsnap it to the, there we go. And then scale it up to basically block everything out. As for what we're gonna put in here, probably something like that. Then we're gonna slide something in there to do the lower part, which usually blocks stuff out. This can be painted just like a normal sort of uh, material. Now, suspension in the way. I suppose what I'm going to have to do here is maybe some blendering work. I suppose I could just move this forward for now. Mm, gets rid of most of it. The rest we can get rid of in Blender. As for the rear, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. What we are going to do, however, is get these brakes to move to the right side. I don't know why they're over here. So brake offset. Go, go away. Nobody wants you here. You know what? Actually, hold on. Let's also make them a little bit smaller so then they disappear inside of the wheel. Perfect. As you can see here, Absolutely no brakes on the front. And in the rear, you can barely really see anything. So let's have a look at our suspension setup. Hmm, does go in during the bodywork area and then a single leaf spring sort of setup, which is kind of confirmed around here. And that looks like a friction shock absorber. Let me clarify what I mean by that. Early shock absorbers, I mean, originally didn't even exist. Then what they decided to do was do just plates and plates of uh, different sorts of materials like leather, paper, sometimes just metal on metal was the very common sort of one. And then they made them a uh, uh, hydraulic kind of. But yeah, basically they were just friction things together, which would eventually stop the spring from bouncing due to just friction. The problem with that is like it would become like quite stuttery because that's just how friction goes eventually when things get a little bit worn down or heated up even and they eventually went to the hydraulic sort of ones and the best ones were the vertical ones which is what we see on cars now as for us we're just gonna run whatever sort of suspension we've got to set to a sports one and you know what we may just reduce our dampeners a bit next thing we're gonna add is whatever the hell this is i don't know I just work here. I'm guessing something to do with the cylinder heads, but it doesn't hurt to stick something in there. Let's start with trying something like this. Does it? Mm, it doesn't really seem to fit perfectly. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Unfortunately, I don't think I have anything else that really fits that shape. I think, for our purposes, this will do. Next, we got this weird looking radiator cap. I think we have, like, fuel caps, yeah. Something like this, maybe? This looks a little bit better. Except no real brim around there, but there is a little bit of an indentation. I think that can be represented by this. That'll be fine. Next, we got an opening for a flat four port exhaust. Hmm. I think I have the right sort of thing in here. Grab you, and then get rid of the insides. Perfect. Would you look at that? Looks like we've already got the right shape. Love it. And then the third lot up here. This is a very strange engine. Next is this exhaust. We're going to ignore the complex geometry here that we're not going to find in default automation stuff. Maybe go with just the normal bit of exhaust. A lot of these are very, very specific sort of shapes, but I think this fits best. That's looking pretty cool. It angles directly out from the exhaust and then straightens up for a big weird muffler. All right, rotate you around. Good. All right, now let's just shrink these up. And for the top one, it's looking fairly standard. Wait, 
F10 gets rid of UI? Oh, okay. That's something I'm gonna have to remember. Nice, good. All right, muffler time. We're gonna have a look here. It's not very cylindrical, it is quite flat. The unfortunate thing is the mufflers that we have aren't really flat, if I can find them. They're in here somewhere, right? Oh wait, they were right here, okay. Yeah, close, and I think close enough. This one looks quite vertical, this one seems angled in a bit. So we'll start with this one first, and then bring this one down here. We might have to do a bit of fudging on this one, to be honest, yeah, over in Blender. But for now it looks okay. And just a little bit of tilt, and that's the main part of this exhaust done. Oh, now I think I know it's got the tilt, it's because the exhaust comes out here. They didn't want it to interfere with the tire. Oh, smart. Unagi. Then the exhaust both seems to go out, a little bit of a curve there, and then a flat blade? Sure, why not? I honestly don't think I have something that quite fits that description, but doesn't hurt to at least try. We have these, but not quite the right shape, but I think it's good enough. So what do they look like? Hmm. Yeah, these are more triangular. I think really our best option is to at least put it here for now, and then maybe fudge the numbers a little bit later. Then we're gonna place one weird one up here to go with this part. <laughs> this looks so jank. It will fix it, fix it in Blender at some point. Oh man, with those straps on there, that's looking pretty sick. Now let's try the leather straps because those look pretty cool too. Remember they used to be a mod for this. I wonder if there's something similar. <gasps> there is, but I don't know if they stick to the body. Nah, okay, they're gonna be like this, are they? I need something that conforms to the body that has that shape. I mean, the closest we got is this, but it ends up giving round edges, so. No good. Wait, hold on. Bumpers, there might be something in here that conforms nicely. Alrighty, we got something that shapes to us. Good. First one goes down the front here. Something like this. Then paint it all a brown leather. Something like that. And we try to get this to line up. Yay me. Getting to do all of the annoying lovely things. You know, not so bad. Though the clasp is meant to be along the top, but it's fine, we'll deal with it. Next one, towards the rear. Right about here. Now let's look at these ventilate. Oh, there's a lot of ventilation here. Fortunately, I don't think we have anything that really fits that exactly. I think my best option maybe is just to put like a bazillion of these down. Oh, this is gonna be really, really high poly. And I am done! <sighs> I must say though, this is looking pretty freaking cool. Though it does look a bit like a sled. Let me turn the suspension back on. As for suspension, what I think we're gonna do is like there's these cool things, but they don't really fit what I'm doing. I have this one mod that I made a while ago. I think this fits a whole lot better. The big thing, if you happen to notice it, was the fact that the spring was mounted forwards and only the rear end was the part that actually did the connection to the spring as opposed to being connected in the middle, like most springs are. Then there's a bit of a weird brass connection and I think we're good. And as you can see, there's two of them. Easy done. That's looking pretty sick. As for the front, it looks like a conventionally mounted leaf spring. So I think we'll fudge that over in Blender. Let's now have a look at the track width. The track is apparently 1.52 meters. And that should be from the middle of the tire to the middle of the tire. 0.75. And, oh, our track width is a little bit wide. Luckily, all we have to do is track width and bring that in just a smidge, somewhere around there. I think we have a little window that fits that sort of description. Which one are we looking at, though? Hmm, none of these are quite exactly right. I just want a square one at an angle, not with, like, weird shapes. Oh, that one's close. Maybe it does have a hinge, weird. Even here I could see that it's got the uh, little extra bit. Okay, well then which one are we gonna go for? I think we could go this. If only we could change the colors of different things, like make this down here steel. Everything is basically monochromatic. Hmm, all right, that'll do. Let's put a square of it, basically. Now it's time to start looking at the cockpit. And that looks to be the rev gauge to about 3000 RPM. But this isn't a continuation of the body. As you can see, there's a little bit of a hood here. So this does actually come under a little bit. Eh, eh, close enough. That's looking pretty good. Let's find that wheel now. I'm pretty sure I do have a cross style wheel. Perfect. Oh, it's even got its own 
uh, steering column, so I don't have to put one in myself. Then for the seat, just a very basic leather thing. And luckily, we have something that kind of fits that description a little bit. Kind of the same place where I get a lot of my interior fixtures from, right here, and then this guy. Then the piece de resistance, a shifter. Perfect. Do we have anything else to do? I think we're pretty good and done. I think really the next step is to go send this over to a bit of beam and G goodness. I wonder what the test track reckons this thing will do. Hey, there we go. Okay. Oh, oh my god! A seven and a half minute lap! Oh why? What? I've never seen that before! And on a car with so much power! Oh, and it's jiggly too. Oh dear, hold on. Oh, very, very jiggly. But the thing really likes to rev quite a lot. And wheel spin! Lots and lots of jiggle. I'm getting off the line. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm getting a wheel spin at like 30% still. This is not great. Oh, dear. Oh, this thing is... Not easy to drive. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> uh, I think we need to go have a look at some footage quickly to explain something. This is the Napier accelerating. As you can see, lots of problems. And then, no real acceleration happening whatsoever. And now, as you can see, it's taking off. You can hear that they're not really pushing it very hard. And they're going as fast as they can go. That's... Oh. <laughs> So now I think I understand. I thought they were always just taking it easy. But it turns out that they just didn't want to do burnouts all the time. Good golly. Oh dear. Don't worry, we got this brake and turn in with no front brakes. You know what, actually, hold on. In the parts selector, I can find exactly the front brakes and empty them out. This is going to be bad. I never did check the rear brakes, but I suppose we're going to find out how good or bad they are. So we're coming up and they reckon start breaking it about here. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, okay. Well, we got a little bit of lockup, so at least we know that we're at the limit of grip. Oh, dick. <laughs> oh no. This is, this is hilarious and absolutely fantastic. Oh my god. This is so awesome. If only it was just a little bit more rigid. Oh god. It goes around so easily. Just the torque is insane. Okay, like 20-ish percent throttle at all times. I'm gonna go full sweat mode for this. And now the back straight. Let's just listen to it. Oh no. Oh no! Oh, poop sticks. Well, I think it's about time I go do some work on this in Blender. There's been a bit of an update. You remember how the engine sounded right? It sounded pretty good. Well, in Engine Sim it sounds pretty decent as well. That sounds pretty good. And in here, you know, even though a little bit lumpy, it sounds still pretty decent. But under load, I mean there's a few glitches here, but you can hear it pretty well. Sorry about the glitches, it's because I got BeamNG open at the same time. I'm trying to show you something. So in BeamNG, not the greatest sound, I'm gonna be honest. And when in third, you know, it starts off okay. But when you start getting into higher RPMs, it just doesn't have quite the same sound. Yeah. 
Yeah, so... It's not... the best sounding engine in the world. Do I go back to the old one or do I keep this? I don't know, I think I'll leave the files in there so if people know how to change it, you can easily just go back and change it so you can choose whichever audio file you want to run with. And... The brakes are absolutely garbage. They only do a little bit better than just letting this thing roll to a stop, and they will... eventually... Oh, no, wrong way. Eventually... overheat. Oh, they didn't overheat this time. Great, I don't want it to stall. So we're just gonna hold here on the brakes. 100% on the brakes. There we go. Oh, dearie me. But hey, look at this. I also got the steering wheel to work and the rev gauge to uh, rev, rev gauge to work. Yeah. I, uh, words fail me. I think the only thing left to do is to take all the power numbers. Transcribing this is going to take some time. Either way, I put the power curve in it. It's a little bit wonky, but you know, not too bad. And I found out that it actually only really raced on two different places. One, a disused old oval racetrack, and two, at the Bonneville Sod Flats. Now, I have a mod for the Bonneville Sod Flats, but I'd much rather try out the new Sod Flats that we've got given us to in default in the game. This thing is gonna be an absolute nightmare to drive. Ooh, over Everest. Ooh. Yeah, I've over Everest. Yeah, I've changed the over Everest to be at 3000 RPM now. And I could set the RPM limiter lower, but this thing did not have an RPM limiter. The RPM limiter was your right foot. So you gotta be real careful when driving this. But here we go. On to the salt flats. The really, really not so great salt flats. And immediately it becomes a little bit bumpy, okay. We're not digging into the soil, so that's okay. We don't want to lose too much traction, though. I think we're about good. And then into the top gear, and we're just going to hold it. Oh, hello. And see what we can do. So we're aiming for about, like, 230 or 240 kilometers now. I think we're going to easily reach that. Hold on. I just realized. With the amount of wheel spin we're getting, we should probably have the airspeed indicator up. And we're going 204 so far. So all we want to do is get to about 230. And you know what? This is actually really easy. Me thinks maybe we don't have enough air drag. Whoops, okay, we're, we're off the... Oh, we're heading towards a fence now. Let's realign and see what speed we can reach eventually. I was really hoping that I would have the right drag coefficient, but it seems I was a bit wrong. 260 kilometers an hour. Oh boy, this thing can really book a 270, 280. Wow, this thing will just keep going, won't it? Oh, good golly. Uh, 290. Well... It seems that I haven't added enough drag to this vehicle. Now, there is one bit of tuning in here. It's not the greatest bit of tuning, because it does really weird things when you start going on water. I wonder if it's really bad on land as well. Uh, it's in it. Oh, here we go. Dragon buoyancy. That's at like 85 to that. Let's hope that this doesn't do weird things. Looks like we're still good. Let's see what happens when we get up to full speed now. This thing is really hard to be smooth with and, like, not break traction. Once we get into third gear, it's not quite so bad. And we're now going over peak power. So we're just going to push a little bit more, then change gear. And now cruise away. Oh, okay. Seems that we're starting to lose a little bit of traction. We're okay. Ooh. And we're already getting back up to the previous speed. God damn it. 240. 250. <sighs> Looks like we failed. I mean, look at this. We're going 290 again. Come on. Usually a drag coefficient of like 0.3 is pretty bad. So I thought 15 or oh, 85, sorry, would be good enough. Let's go to like... 273. Let's hope the weird things don't happen. Everything seems stable. All right, let's give it a try. And luckily I didn't get any over-rev risk damage. 
and push all the way up again. We're in top gear now. Oh, hello. Oh, we're getting a little bit sideways there. We're okay. Good. Yes, that's what we like to see. Okay. 210. Looks like we're reaching our top speed too easily. 220. 230. 240. God damn it. My god, we're going nearly 290 still. What? We have the main J-beam here, and where drag goes in is right about here. So we're just going to get rid of you and call you, like, 0.4? Oh, sorry, hold on, 0.4? He's hoping. It's been a while since I played with this. And our top speed is still going quite fast. 230, 240. Apparently this thing just has too much power. But by the rate it's slowing, it looks like we're going to be somewhere around the same amount. So let's increase this to 0.6. And off we try again. Wow, we are just barreling past 230, 240. N no Fs were given in the chat. This is... All right, are we going faster? Wait, what's happening? I feel like we're going faster this time. Oh my god, I think I've done it. The thing is actually now struggling to reach 230, which is perfect, except for one little thing. My drag coefficient is 50. That's not right. I don't know what's happened in the code in the back end, probably something to do with the automation export itself, but normally a car's drag coefficient is about 0.3-ish, anywhere from like uh, the high 0.2s to somewhere like 0.4 or 0.5 for a really bad car. 50? Shouldn't move. Either way, this, this thing is a blast. Let's go a little bit more, see what we can actually get by the end of this straight and see if we can beat their record. I wish I knew what the drag coefficient of this car actually was and knew how to put it into BMNG. Because apparently I don't know how to do it anymore. Oh wait, no, hold on. Are we stuck? We're at 227, is that our maximum? Well, interesting. I have an idea. I'm gonna take it somewhere else. I feel this is a pretty good place to take it to. Remember these pitches? Very banked corners. All right, banked corner. Show me what you can do. 190. Oh, looks like we're gonna maybe struggle a little bit here, but I reckon coming out of that last bank, like before this bank, we should be able to reach our top speed. This one's got a bit of a break in the middle of the banking with this like minor corner in the middle. Let's see what we can do. Oh no, hold on. Yeah, we're already up to 200 and 20, so I think the top speed we're looking for is 231 point something, maybe? Not entirely sure. Oh, okay, no, no. Getting a little messy. That one was not the corner for us. All right, next banked corner. 218 is what we've reached so far. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I just wanted to harmonize with the engine there for a second when I realized I could do it. All right. Now, blasting it down the back straight. I think we can get a better exit. We're struggling. Oh, I don't know if we can do it. We're going to struggle to reach 225, maybe? Oh, okay. Let's go for a better exit and see if we can't do it. My god, you would have to have balls of steel to do this in real life. This thing is not safe and it doesn't have brakes really. I mean, it has brakes, but mostly in name only. This is pretty abysmal. What we want to be doing is over 100, uh, 215 maybe by the end of the next banked corner. So let's try not to lose a lot here and try to be as smooth as possible. God damn it. Oh, no. Oh, poop. All right, I'm gonna go full sweat mode for here, from here to the next corner. Crab apples, frick it. All right, let's try it again. You know what, I'm gonna let you listen to the whole acceleration from zero.
maybe if I stick to the high. Oh, but then you get really close to the wall. I'm gonna try it again. for there. <sighs> ah, I was doing so well. But I just don't think I have the skill, without a wheel maybe, to make this work. Which is a crying shame, this thing is really awesome. Not to mention, oh, hold on, stalled the engine. As I was saying, not to mention, we have a full functioning interior, which I think is pretty darn cool. Massively overgeared steering, so then you can have like fine control whilst also being uh, easy to steer. You know, all of the things that you'd need from a car at this time period. And 150 kilometers an hour in first gear. This is dangerous! I'm pretty sure if you just hit the wall there, you would probably snag on something and then get flung into it and you'd have no seat belt, nothing like that. At least the fuel tank would be behind you. So... You would die slowly and not in a ball of fire. Oh, no, I can't. No. Oh, this thing seriously needs. Oh god, we've gone. Oh, much much better. Uh, ah, camera doing weird things. Much, <laughs> much better track. Or. Better tires, maybe. But they were limited by their tire technology of the day. Let's finish this off where we started it. At the automation test track to see if we can beat that seven and a bit minute lap. I'm pretty sure I can do this. And you know what? I'm gonna go full sweat mode for you guys. Okay, you know what? This is gonna require a restart. Alright, this time, we're gonna brake much further out, and we're gonna use engine braking as much as possible. Oh, it's stuttering. Oh, come on. 
No, keep it on the black stuff. Oh, hey, look at that. We actually did keep it on the black stuff. Lucky. All right, time to do popsicle now. Oh, we've got to be very careful of this engine. It already has taken a little bit of over rev damage. Oh, popsicle is doing okay so far. And now coming up to Adam's apex. Oh, oh no, I didn't slow down early enough. Did, I think I just heard my brakes starting to fade. That's not a good sign. But don't worry, we're in second gear now. How did this thing do a seven minute lap? I'm pretty sure I have less favorable uh, gearing. Worse brakes, because I don't have any on the front. And less power, I believe? I'm not entirely sure about that one. But my goodness, this thing is, oh, okay. We're going. I'm just gonna switch into second. It's gonna have a lot better control in second. And powering down to the end. Okay, what? How did this thing ever do a seven minute lap? I just did a three minute. This thing was brilliant. I must say guys, this thing is really freaking awesome. The one thing that I love most about it is the like triple muffler setup. And the mufflers are meaty as hell guys. Look at those things, and I also do have all three exhausts working. Everything here is actually legit, except I think maybe the upper muffler, sorry, exhaust particulates is not coming out exactly the right place. I may have a bit of a fiddle with that. Got the steering wheel working, got the gauge working. This thing is really fun. And you know what else is fun? My channel members, because you are all fun guys. <laughs> like mushrooms, yeah, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> the the top tier channel member that I would like to thank is Dehelman. Thank you very much for being a top tier channel member. To the rest of you, I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye. Why don't you check out a video whilst you're here? You know, more watch time, please. Give me your AdSense dollars in watch time. <laughs>